Hey guys, Andrew here from Sumo Apps and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the view controller lifecycle. So as you code your iOS apps, you're going to want to run code that executes after the view is actually shown on the screen and when the view disappears from the screen. So this tutorial is going to look at functions that do that and also how the view controller lifecycle works and where is the best place to paste certain pieces of code in the view control lifecycle and that was placed, not paste. At least you're on Stack Overflow. So there are five stages to the view controller lifecycle. The first one, which you probably know off by heart, is view did load, which is in all your view controls by default. The next ones are view will appear, view did appear, view will disappear, and view did disappear. So let's take a look at each of these stages, what they mean and what sort of code you'd place in them. Okay, so let's take a look at view did load. This is a good place to put code where you only ever need to run it once. This could be initialization code or code to set constraints in your view. When you go to another screen and come back to that screen, the view did load does not run again. It only ever runs once. And there is an exception to this, is when your app's running low on memory, it might discard that view controller from memory, so the view controller can run more than once. However, it's very unlikely. Next one is the view will appear. This is run every time before the screen is actually assigned to the user. So if you have a screen here that has code in view will appear to show a message, then you go to a second screen, come back to this screen, that view will appear code is going to run again and show that message. So it's run every time that view is shown to the user. And the thing with view will appear is it runs before the view is actually shown to the user. So it runs as it's loading every time. So this is good to place code in here that needs to run every time on that view. The next one is view did appear. View did appear runs when a screen has actually been shown to the user. And this is good to place code that needs to get positions of elements on the screen, such as text boxes, table views, images, and so on. Because before this, the auto constraints are still being set. So sizes can be different and the positions can be different. So the final result you get when view did appear actually runs. Okay. And much like the view will appear and the view did appear, the next two ones are the same except when you're exiting a view. So the first one is view will disappear. This is run when you're going to another screen, but before you actually show the next screen. So this is good to place code such as hiding the keyboard, saving state information and stopping any tasks that might be running. So you might be doing an image upload but if you go to another screen, you may want to cancel that. So that's a good place to put all that code there. The next one, view did disappear, only actually runs when a view did disappear completely from the screen. So now that you have a good grasp of these five functions in the view control lifecycle, I'm gonna show a diagram here, which shows you this in a nice illustrated memoir, so it's great to keep this diagram as a reference. And now let's go and actually look at it in Swift code. So I've created a small app that has one screen, a button on that screen will go to a second screen, and then you can go back from the second screen to the first screen. So we're going to see all this in action. View did load, view will appear, view did appear, view will disappear, and view did disappear. So let's get into coding. Okay, so I went ahead and created a basic app here. In our first screen, we have a button which goes to the next screen. The next screen's blank, but it's got a navigation controller so we can go back. So let's go to the view controller where the code lies and take a look at the view controller lifecycle in code. So in view did load, we're gonna print out view did load. And we are going to add the other view control lifestyle functions and also print out them. So the first one is view will appear. In here we'll print view will appear. 
the exact name of the function. The next one is view did appear. Print once again, view did appear. Next up is view will disappear. Print out a few will disappear. Next up is view did disappear, and we'll print out view did disappear. So, what's going to happen is view did load. Remember, we'll always run when our view loads. The second time it loads, it won't run at all. The only case which is an exception to this, is if your app's out of memory and then unloads that view. These other functions will run every time in the view. The first one will run when the views will appear. So it hasn't appeared, appeared on the screen yet, but it will appear. This function here actually runs when the view is shown on a screen. This one here runs when the view will disappear from the screen, but hasn't gone yet. And the final one will run when the view has actually disappeared from the screen. So let's move that console out, run our app, and we'll take a look at the console output for those print statements. So we can see our app's loaded here. Our view did load ran, view will appear, then view did appear has ran, which is expected. Now if we go to the next screen, view will disappear comes up straight away. View did disappear comes up a second later. The reason for that is the screen changing is being animated. So it only runs when the view fully disappears from the screen. So if we go back now, we notice we only get the view will appear and view did appear. We no longer get the view did load. So that's the view controller life cycle in Swift. So it's great to know what these actually do. And remember, at the start of the video, I mentioned what type of code belongs where. So keep that in mind when coding your apps. It's a good reference to have and can speed up your app significantly if you have your code in the right places, especially network and loading code in this sort of environment. So don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the future.